Hello Year 12, so we are on to our sixth lesson and our sixth poem. So we are having a little look today at the poem called The Deliverer. Um, it is quite a hard hitting poem, so just want to warn you about that before we start. Um, but obviously, um, if you need to, just take little breaks from it and come back to it. So I'm going to start out with our little starting activity, as always. Um, so just write out the definitions. There's only three words there that I want to focus on for today. So patriarchal, infant side, and maternal. So as ever, I hope that you have hit pause there for a few minutes and you've got the definitions down, um, what you either remember them to be or what you believe them to be. I'll run through them now with you. So you've got patriarchal, we've looked at that quite a lot. So society or government dominated and run by men. Um, infanticide, the act of a parent or parents killing their child. You might have been able to guess that when we've looked at things like regicide before. And then uh, maternal, so the feelings of a typical caring mother, the act of behaving in a motherly way. So not necessarily needing to be the mother of a child to act in a maternal way towards them. Okay, so we will have a little look at how those definitions then tie into um, the poem that we're looking at today. So I will do what I usually do. I'll read through it and then I'm going to give you some questions so that you start to form your own critical opinion before I start giving you my ideas on the poem and uh, what I found other people have said about the poem then as well. So the Deliverer, Our Lady of the Light Convent, Kerala. The sister here is telling my mother how she came to collect children because they were crippled or dark or girls found naked in the streets, covered in garbage, stuffed in bags, abandoned at their doorstep. One of them was dug up by a dog, thinking the head barely poking above the ground was bone or wood, something to chew. This is the one my mother will bring. Milwaukee Airport, USA. The parents wait at the gates. They are Americans, so they know about ceremony and tradition, about doing things right. They haven't seen or touched her yet, don't know if her fetish were plucking hair off hands or how her mother tried to bury her. But they are crying. We couldn't stop crying, my mother said, feeling the strangeness of her empty arms. This girl grows up on videotapes, sees how she's passed from woman to woman. She returns to twilight corners, to the day of her birth, how it happens in some desolate hut, outside village boundaries, where mothers go to squeeze out life. Watch body slither out from body, feel for penis or no penis, toss the baby to the heap of others, trudge home to lie down for their men again. Okay, so like I said, quite a hard hitting poem. Um, so I'm going to put up the questions and I'd like you to again have a go at hitting pause and answering those questions before then um, writing down some notes on what I've said and what I found about the poem myself. So um, you've got then first question what makes someone a parent so um you know what is your uh, stance on a parenthood um i mean personally i believe that it's not necessarily blood that makes a parent a parent um, i think that you know you can adopt you can foster a child and you know you can still be a parent to that child it doesn't necessarily have to mean blood but it'd be really good to sort of um think, think about your own personal perspective on that what do you believe is the significance of the title what are your initial reactions to the poem? Um, why do you think such events still take place in certain parts of the world? And number five, identify the most shocking aspects of the poem. Explain why you think they are aimed, who sorry, they are aimed at, and why you think they're aimed at those particular people. To what extent do you believe this poem is political in nature? So as I said, if we can hit pause and just work your way through those, first of all, to get your own critical perspective um, before we break it down line by line. All right, I really hope that you have taken the time there to answer those questions and thought about your own critical perspective of the poem. I think it's really, really important to develop um, that aspect of being able to feel confident in your own thoughts and your own beliefs about something um, before then uh, going ahead and jotting down what I've written and uh, what I found others to have said. So we will start as I usual, usually do and we'll go through it um, and then I'll sort of talk about the structure at the end um, and some of the sort of um, key ideas, key imagery then in the poem overall. So um, firstly the title. So as with so many of the poems that we've looked at before, there is ambiguity in this one as well. Um, the deliverer, we've got the determiner there that's being used which is quite impersonal. 
and the deliverer is quite ambiguous. Once you've read through the poem, you know, it, it um, creates more questions about who the deliverer actually is. Are we talking about the actual biological mother who's delivered the child? Are we talking about the adoption agency that's delivering the child to America? Or is it uh, someone else entirely? Could it be the actual person who's acting as an agent for the adoption agency and who's actually travelling with the child to hand them over to um, to, to the adopt adopted parents? Um, also, it's good to know um, regarding the uh, poet, so Tishani uh, Doshi, which I hope I've, really, hope I've pronounced that correctly, um, but in terms of context, her own mother brought an abandoned girl from India to the USA, so her mother acted as that agent between the adoption agency and the adoptive parents. Um, so once we have that contextual understanding, we've got a better idea then of, of why she's written this poem um, and also what the poem's telling us about. Um, so the narrator there as well it speculated that it's the temporary foster mother of the abandoned girl in India that's actually telling this story. So it could be that the poet's mother is telling us this story and that's the narrative voice that the poet has chosen to use. We've also got then um, the setting that's given to us where this is taking place um, and that kind of, I'll speak about that a little bit more at the end um, because the poem is very much structured in this way where it's split between... Um, in India where this takes place, where the girl's uh, birthplace, um, and then the contrast with um, the Milwaukee airport then to the USA. So we've got this contrast in, in places and those titles then kind of divide that and split that up. Um, so we're in a convent um, which is where abandoned children then are sort of dropped off um, and abandoned and um, we've got, let's just dive straight into the first answer, so the sister here is telling my mother how she came to collect children. So even from the beginning there in this first stanza, in the outset of this stanza, that idea of collecting children, it makes them seem like objects. So it objectifies them rather than thinking of them as, as humans, as people. You think about collection, like collecting stamps or um, collecting cards. And, and sort of the, the language that's being used here is very much producing this imagery of them being collected like objects, so there's that objectification. And the sister is obviously referring to a nun that's in this convent. It's telling them how she came to collect children because they were crippled or dark or girls. So this listing is very brutal, even with the um, description there, crippled, it's not a word that we tend to use when we're referring to a disability. Um, disability or disabled is how we tend to um, discuss disabilities now. So this word, you could say it's quite archaic, but it's not really used anymore um, when, we're, when we're talking about disabilities. But um, could it then be used deliberately here to sort of show the harsh, brutal reality of um, how, um, particularly in these circumstances, and we can start to question at this point, well, why is it that you know, disabled or darker skinned or female children are left at this convent. And a big part of, of the reason is, is actually because of poverty. Um, you know, if they have got a disabled child, the, the harsh reality is that they, they can't afford to, to look after them and care for the needs and the specialised needs of that child. Um, so it's, it's good to start at this point questioning the reason that something so horrific takes place can we really blame the people who are doing this or is there um does blame need to be placed higher up um in terms of maybe the government um and you know the the, the reality of the the class system and those then that are towards the the bottom end of that um are they having to resort to such horrific practices of, of discarding um their children because of of the reality in which they live in so it's good to start questioning that at this point in the poem um, but as I said, it's, it's these cultural stigmas then as well that contribute to the abandonment of children. Um, so not just because of, of the thinking about maybe with disability, uh, because they can't afford to, to keep that child, but um, particularly when it comes to the dark-skinned dark or, or the, the sex of the child, um, there's more of a cultural stigma maybe attached to that, and that is part of the reason that they are abandoned. So, um, interesting, with the opening of the lines on this next stanza, we've got found, covered, abandoned. 
and it's almost this ongoing process then. So we know that this happens, but it's also ongoing. It's an ongoing issue. It's something that um, is almost routine. So found naked in the streets. So you've got vulnerability there as well, that description with naked. Um, there's a vulnerability to these children. It could also indicate how um, early on they're abandoned. So maybe just after giving birth, which is definitely emphasised later on in the poem. Um, covered in garbage. So again, that ob objectification suggesting really that you know they're, they're seen as um, not even human. They're thrown away like rubbish. Um, stuffed in bags. So quite a harsh... Um, verb there being used, stuffed in bags, there's a carelessness and brutality um, to the way that's, that that's being discussed, That those actions abandoned at their doorstep, so talking about the convent being abandoned and left there. Um, you've got there as well, in terms of syntax, so how the lines are put together and constructed, there's the foregrounding of those verbs, so that's sort of emphasised, that they're found, they're covered, they're abandoned. Um, and again, like I said, it's an ongoing issue. Um, one of them was dug up by a dog. So even here as well, you've got um, the plosive sounds, dug up by a dog. Um, it sounds very harsh and it kind of mirrors the um, harsh reality of what's happened there, being dug up by a dog. Thinking the head, barely poking above the ground, was bone or wood something to chew. So it's quite grotesque imagery, really, this idea of this little baby's head barely poking up above the ground for this dog to come along and start digging it up, thinking that they could chew on it. Um, it's reducing that child then as well to something that's not human, again, objectifying uh, the baby. Um, and it could indicate that that is what the mother needs to do in order to go ahead with this practice of abandoning their child. They need to um, almost associate themselves and we had a look at that word um, last week as well, this idea of um, distancing yourself and needing to kind of separate yourself from the situation. And that's what the mother needs to do in order to um, complete this horrific act of, of abandoning their child. Um, and then we've got this um, line in this final part of um, this section of the poem. This is the one my mother will bring. So it sort of jars with what's just been said there as well. It contrasts um, with that uh, the abandonment um, and it makes it more real as well in a sense because it's talking about this specific child that is their, their um, personal story that they were um, the one that was dug up by a dog. This is the one my mother will bring. So we've got that context as well um, in terms of her mother. Um, so we know that he is talking about that personal um, anecdote then, almost. Um, just want to check my notes there. One thing I didn't mention there that actually is quite significant, um, the fact that the um, dog has found the child kind of um, emphasises the danger of the abandonment. So these children, when they are abandoned, it, it's sort of stressing the likelihood that they're going to be that they'll die. Um, so it's, it's a very grim reality that's being painted for us here in the opening um, stanzas of this, this poem. We then have, um, like I said, the um, setting that almost acts like a title here to kind of split up where this is all taking place. So we're now transported to Milwaukee, to the airport, to the USA. And this is obviously where the child then is being taken. The parents wait at the gates. They are Americans, so they know about ceremony. So interesting opening there to the um, start of this next section of the poem. The parents. So this is now referring to the adoptive parents, the ones that are waiting to pick up this this little girl. Um, they are Americans, so they know about ceremony. Now, the way I sort of um, took this initially. Um, when it's particularly when it talks about tradition and about um, doing the things things right, that focus there, the end stopped focus on doing things right. For me, it sort of drew attention to how um, wrong the practice of abandoning children is and the way that it is done in India. Um, so I, I thought it was trying to draw attention to that and this idea that you know um, in America that adoption process and um, 
you know, when it comes to giving up a child for adoption is done in a certain way. And it sort of made me think that the attitude there was that the way it's done in the US is the right way to go about it. Um, and then it's contrasts with then the uh, practices that are going on in India. Um, they're Americans, so they know about ceremony. So when I looked that up, though, some people have suggested that the idea of Western ceremony, so regarding birth and um, adoption, is taken very seriously. And yeah, I thought that was quite a good way to sort of look at it. Um, Western ceremony, that idea then of the importance of birth. And if you look on YouTube, you can search for, you know, lots of examples where it shows um, children being united with the adoptive parents that are waiting for them in the in the US. Um, so uh, also something else that was mentioned is that when you undergo an adoption process, if you um, apply to be adoptive parents, you have to undergo um, lots of sort of um, interviews, testing. Um, they want to know basically that you're a suitable candidate to have a child. So the parents that um, adopt these children as well, particularly when the child is coming from um, a situation where they have been rejected in that way, where they've been abandoned, um, parents are often offered um, sort of training on how to deal with, with that, um, how to deal with um, children who have experienced trauma. Um, in early childhood. Um, so it could also be referring to that as well, that the parents have had to undergo these processes, these checks, to ensure that they are suitable and they are willing then to um, uh, sort of undergo and put up with with uh, that training and ha having to sort of um, d deal with the child in a way that is positive if they do have a negative reaction to their um, abandonment and their, the trauma of their childhood, if that makes sense. Um, so going on to the next bit then, they haven't seen or touched her yet, don't know of her fetish for plucking hair off hands or how her mother tried to bury her. So um, obviously, I mean, the last line is, is probably the most straightforward one to understand there. So she's unaware at the moment, this young girl, this child, she doesn't yet know that her mother tried to bury her and abandon her in that way. Um, they haven't seen or touched her yet, so talking particularly about the adoptive parents, so they haven't actually interacted with the child on that physical level yet. Um, you know, and there's almost a desperation that they want to, which is sort of emphasised in the next stanza when they, they're, they're sort of, when they see the child and when they're introduced to the child. Um, what's interesting in this stanza for me really is where it says, don't know of her fetish for plucking hair off hands. So, um, the way I've sort of seen that and the way that I sort of read about it as well is it may be a coping mechanism for the child and for that abandonment um, that actually she's formed this habit of um, plucking hairs off, off the hand um, and it is her coping mechanism. It's a way for her to sort of self-soothe. Self um, so uh, that can be seen, the best way to explain what self-soothing is, if you are feeling nervous um, sometimes people will have a habit of uh, wringing their hands together or um, uh, playing with their hair, something along those lines. And that's something that we call a self-soothing action. So it's something that you do to sort of try and calm yourself down um, when you're feeling nervous. And maybe for that child, her sort of coping mechanism, something that helps her deal with things, um, is to pluck hairs off hands. Um, and again, like we said, it's that it all comes down to that trauma, that that um, experience of being abandoned and left it, um, well, being taken into the convent. Um, so that that's the line I'd sort of draw attention to there. Um, and then we've got going on to um, the next stanza, but they are crying. And actually, it's interesting that this is the first time that we've seen this idea of um, emotion with um, the child, because before this. It's almost, as I've said, the, the mother, the birth mother, was trying to distance herself um, and dissociate with the situation. And these now, these parents in America, the adoptive parents, those are the ones crying. We couldn't stop crying. Being italicised there might suggest that's coming from the actual couple um, that are talking about their um, emotional response. Um, 
but obviously it's coming from the narrator's mother. Um, well, the narrator, vo the narration, the voice of the narrator is the mother, um, but obviously we're hearing it through the poets as well. Um, feeling the strangeness of her empty arms. So, an interesting line here as well, um, which we can probably attribute to the adoptive mother. Um, and there's this sort of hint there at this natural urge to have children, maybe. And maybe it contrasts then with the practice of, of abandoning the babies in the first place. So for the adoptive mother in America who's yearned for a child, wanted a child, um, for her, and particularly it ties in with the emotion here, it's that contrast. For her, this is a joyous moment. It's something that she's always going to remember. Whereas for the mother in India that actually gave birth to the child, it's something that she probably wants to forget. She tries to sort of push away. Um, but it's showing that difference in culture then that they're just so happy to have this child. They don't mind where the child's come from and how the child's arrived in their lives. They're just happy. They're so overjoyed to have that child. Um, it makes the maybe adoption process more natural as well, this, this highlighting of how, how much this woman wants the child in contrast to the mother who, um, the biological mother, who has abandoned the child. So it makes this idea of adopting a child far more natural um, because it's that child then that's filling those empty arms. On to the final section then of um, the poem and um, like I said I'll come back to the structure because the structure is really interesting in this poem. Um, this girl grows up on videotapes. Now interesting again for, for me I personally thought about it being that modern society and being raised on TV and, and um, it being a sort of parenting um, replacement almost. Um, but Looking it up, someone else made the, the suggestion that it could be referenced to tapes and recordings of her adoption process. So that sort of maybe lasting impact of her abandonment. Um, so that's something that for her will always be a reminder that, you know, she is adopted and it's not her, um, her biological mother that's chosen to raise her and her father, that they abandoned her. Sees how she's passed from woman to woman. So again, that sort of continuation, that um, suggestion that maybe she she is seen as worthless in that society and therefore she is passed from from person to person but also maybe the repetitiveness of that that process um that it's inevitable that it's secular that it's cycle that it's a cycle um that she's passed from woman to woman and that happens then with um, other girls that are born in that society um, she returns to Twilight Corners, so again, two interpretations here. Could it be that she decides to return to her place of birth and find out more? And, you know, that that is um, a dark um, part of her childhood that she returns to? Or could it be then, um, metaphorically, she returns to darkness? So dark thoughts um, and this, this maybe sense of abandonment that's always stayed with her as she's grown up. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what you, you believe that could be interpreted as. But those two suggestions for you there. Um, to the day of her birth, how it happens in some desolate hut outside village boundaries. So for me, um, this was sort of, uh, the significance here was about the description of this, this area. So the desolate hut, suggesting really that there's nothing else around there. Um, and obviously emphasising poverty as well, that, you know, she was born in a hut and outside the village boundaries. So you could almost talk about the idea here as well that what the mother is doing, although it is seen as acceptable in their society, she still does it outside of the village boundaries. So it's almost an un unspoken of acceptance. Um, but she's still kind of outside of society when she does this act of abandoning the child. So outside the village boundaries. Um, so you could talk about the metaphorical um, significance there of being outside of those um, boundaries in society. Contrast to the setting there as well of what we've just heard in um, the airport. Um, so it's interesting that the poet has decided to kind of sandwich the... Um, part of America in between India, um, obviously when the child was originally born and then coming back to it at the end. Um, so we're left with um, 
you know, we start with India there in, in both instances. Um, how it happens in some desolate hut outside village boundaries. So setting is so important here. And that's sort of being emphasised that it comes back to the setting in, in um, India. Where mothers, so you could talk about the collective pronoun there again, so that it's, um, it's rooted in society, um, that it's all mothers in that society, um, and not just one person doing this. Where mothers go to squeeze out life, and that's quite a discompassionate description of birth. And we could talk about that in contrast with in Western society, how we see it as, you know, this miracle of childbirth, the joy of childbirth, the joy of motherhood. And here it's it's almost quite graphically grotesque in the way that it's being described. Squeeze out life. And the way I saw it there, it could be sort of a pun, could be linked to birth or death at that point as well. So squeezing the life out of something can be negative. And squeezing life out here in terms of um, giving birth, it gives it that negative edge. Um, the process there as well has almost been described um, as routine, to squeeze out life. Um, and that's very much how it seems to come across here in these final sort of lines of this stanza uh, of the this um, section, sorry, of the poem. Um, it becomes very routine, so there's no joy or celebration in birth here. It's something that the woman has to do and has to get through um, and then get on with life. Um, there's no sort of pausing or ceremony here. Um, so an unfeeling process, squeeze out life, watch body slither out of body. It becomes quite unpleasant imagery at that point really and it almost becomes quite um, animalistic so that idea as well slither that verb has connotations there as well as a snake um, and could that be something then that is seen as a natural process could it be seen as um, you know snakes we know the biblical link there is very um, negative so there, there is almost a negativity being placed on the mother here, that association with the snake, um, showing may, then maybe that it is the sin of the mother, that it is the mother, the mother's fault. Um, not to say that it is, but um, maybe that is the interpretation here that we're having from this um, societal viewpoint. Watch body slither out of body, but again, very dissociated description there of birth. Um, so on to the next section there, so um, feel for uh, penis or no penis, so societal demands there for males and you know the significance there that, that males are uh, seemingly more important in this society than, than girls are. Um, and very sort of violent, uncaring verb there, toss the baby to the heap of others. So that sort of collective, the heap, shows again the frequency of how, how much and how often this happens um, and also that that again collective of others it um, dehumanizes these babies it, it objectifies them and sees them as um, a collective um, and something worth abandoning and um, that they're not even giving given that individuality as well um, now this is where it's interesting because it, it would be very easy to feel very angry towards these mothers because what they're doing is so um, unnatural really, it, it's not the maternal expectations we have, particularly in the West, um, of what a mother is expected to behave like. Um, you know, you're meant to, as a mother, um, stand up for your children, protect your children, do anything that you can for your children and actually what the mothers are doing in this poem it is very much against that um, it's very much the opposite of that but this line actually offers us some insight as to why the mothers are behaving in this way trudge home so that verb there there's almost a weariness to it um, and it could be because it's this constant cycle that they have to undergo and they're, they're tired of it they're wary of it um, but also there's almost an unwillingness in that verb as well that when you trudge it's something that you don't want to do home to lie down for their men again so again very interesting play on words here the adverb at the end there in particular drawing attention to how it is secular so it's like at least that cycle that they cannot break free from um, and that they are powerless then as well to break free of um, which is where this this phrase the lie down is that submissiveness 
So lying down, again, it could be um, connotations there of um, sexual activity. So again, they have to go home and lie down for their husband to, to have sex with them. But also you could talk about the significance there of um, how it's suggesting submissive behaviour from them. If they have to lie down and take whatever their husband tells them to do or not do. Um, so as I said, it could, it could be indicate indicating the authority their husbands have and that they are actually trapped and just as much victims of this as the children the the, the children particularly the girls that they're giving birth to um, and as it said they're the crippled or dark-skinned girls that they're giving birth to um, so actually are they caught up in that cycle just as much as the the babies who are abandoned um, be interesting to see what you think of that so what I will do now, I'll just go through some information in terms of the structure of the poem and um, some sort of overall thoughts then on um, some of the sort of ideas in the poem, some of the key imagery in the poem. I'll go through some of the sort of overarching ideas that I've got first of all and then I'll sort of focus in on the structure. Um, but one of the things to note here is this idea then that these patriarchal sort of forces twist that natural process and societal and economic expectations they turn sex birth and motherhood into very into something horrific um, and it's very much seen as something that the women um, dissociate themselves from rather than actually something to take um, sort of pride in that it's something that they are capable of doing something that empowers women and in fact it's been twisted in then to something that is unnatural um, and it's more of an economic and um, objectified uh, process and you know that like I said that that could be interpreted then as the patriarchal forces that, that inflict that. In terms of the intention then is it to draw attention to the practices that happen um, across the world and this does happen and um, is it to draw attention to that and to raise awareness towards it um, it's interesting to know that up to as many as 10 million girls were killed by their parents. Um, you know, that's a shocking statistic. Um, and, and to know that that still happens and that still occurs, um, you know, it's, it's definitely worth bringing, bringing to attention these practices then. Um, and if that is obviously the int intention of the poet, then, you know, it's, it's obviously with that reason in mind that it is still a practice that takes place and it's that it does claim the lives of so many um, so many girls so we've got a very formal tone then lack of emotion third person as well again lacks that emotion so again is it because of that idea of distancing um, trying to maybe present this information as very factual and trying trying not to put so much of a bias on it um, you know, it does explore the maternal role as well. So what actually makes a parent a parent? Um, thinking about this girl who still has these issues of abandonment, um, which is understandable, completely understandable, yet has parents that very much wanted her in form of her adoptive parents. So it's very interesting to um, centre a discussion then around, you know, what is that, that role of, of um, a parent? And in particular in this poem, um, that maternal role um, particularly as, as a woman um, and you know it, it's definitely worth mentioning here from a scientific viewpoint that um, when a woman is pregnant she will um, release hormones and there are there are chemicals there that, that um, sort of bond the mother with her child um, and you know that there are instances of postnatal, postnatal depression where that there's issues with that happening but you know overall you know when we're looking at the biological process here you know it's we see it as more typically natural for women to bond with their children and that very much is missing from from this poem and there is an almost deliberate um lack of that here because it is showing that this process is not something to do with you know postnatal depression it's not about that it is about very much the practice of abandoning um children because of specific um, societal expectations then that you know they do not want to be burdened, burdened with a child that they see as burden because they are disabled or um, because then of, of um, their darker skin or because that they are female um, and they see that to have a child like that would be to burden them and therefore they, they 
don't go through with it because of that. Um, so just being very aware that that is the specific reason um, and motivation behind this poem. Um, thinking about the structure then as well, I mean I've mentioned that it's in sort of three sections and it's interesting that the USA section is um, sort of sandwiched then in between the two focuses on um, India. And we can talk about as well, it's quite interesting, someone mentioned that the asterisks that are used to sort of divide up the sections of the poem. Um, some people see that almost like a receipt, because um, you have those little asterisks on, on receipts. Um, and you could say that there is almost a commercial aspect to it, because you've got um, the children being exchanged, and there would be money involved in this process as well, um, because it does cost money to have certain um, legal aspects uh, filled out. So you could have um, that, again, emphasis of objectification of the children, and, and seeing this as a kind of monetary process where the child is passed on um, and you know money is exchanged so it is seen as a trade um, and that's where the asterisks come into play as well because it looks like a receipt um, format to the poem but also it could be that additional emphasis then on the distance and not just physical distance between India and the USA but also that the the huge difference in attitude towards um you know children that are disabled dark-skinned children and girls um that there's a very much a cultural distance as well in societal ideas and beliefs um so there is significance there in in how the um areas have been used as well so those italicized um almost titles of where the poem is taking place um, could be seen to separate then and show the distance and not just physical distance. Um, also we've got the regular tercet um, structure so you've got three lines in most stanzas and that is only then changed where there is a focus on um, life in um, Kerala. Um, so you've got this sort of line here and you could suggest that that is a one-line stanza to emphasise the shock that it is this specific child that was buried by the parent and then dug up by a dog that is being talked about. So it's almost like a climax of the poem. It's a shocking turn of events. Um, and then the structure changes here as well when we're talking about the um, sort of practice that is common in that particular area where the mothers go to squeeze out life which watch body slither out from body um, feel for penis or no penis toss the baby to the heap of others so these are very much then you know shocking realities and brutality behind um, this process that that takes place in India um, trudge home to lie down for their men again and very much emphasizing again this line being a one stanza line is it to emphasize that um, cycle that not only the children are trapped in but the parents the mothers are trapped in as well um that it's not something that they want to do but emphasizing the fact that it's something that they feel they have to do because um it, it is um secular um okay so uh what i will do now is go over the themes as i usually do so again as i always suggest it might be worth sort of highlighting these in a different color on your copy of the poem um, and just taking a minute to sort of see how these themes become apparent throughout this poem um, and some quotes then that you would take from the poem to support these ideas. So gender um, it's often a central theme in literature and often a controversial topic. In this poem it is obviously very controversial because we've got the idea that um, females are seen as inferior and they are abandoned at birth because of that. Deprivation, so this is a key issue that can have a lasting impact on an individual. It can cause many problems for those who experience it. Now, what I want you to think about and consider with that theme, with deprivation, it's not just the children, the babies that are being deprived here. Um, you could also look at the women that um, are having to give birth, that they are deprived as well of that um, sort of natural process of birth and um, you know that that patriarchal society that emphasizes the importance of men over women that they are being deprived there as well so you know I, I would like you to look at it from more than one angle there 
powerlessness and vulnerability, so often focused on in order to explore the impact on those that are left powerless and vulnerable. Well, we definitely have the vulnerability and the powerlessness of the, the babies and the children that are abandoned. Um, but again, think of it from the aspect of um, the women that give birth. Um, they, they have a certain powerlessness as well and a, a certain vulnerability if they are caught in this cycle um, because of societal expectations. Parent and child relationships. So thinking about the bond between parents and children, it's often one of the most significant ones for us humans. Um, and it can have far reaching consequences when that bond is not positive. Um, you know, and we can have experiences in childhood and with our parents that actually have that long lasting effect. And particularly when um, someone has had to go through that adoption process, that feeling of being abandoned by their maternal parents can be, you know, so, so difficult for, um, particularly as a child, to deal with, with those ideas. Um, and that's very much something that's explored in this poem. So uh, having a little look where that comes up, really significant. Um, and obviously the impact as well for the um, adoptive parents, because, you know, th th there is, again, that parent-child relationship. They they desperately want a child and they will see that child as their own. Um, so it, it's, in it's interesting to explore where that comes up in the poem and the impact of that. So as ever, there is the bibliography, so where I have um, had a little look and seen what other people have said about the poem and added to my own notes, um, that I will put that into our Google Classroom as well, so you'll be able to look back on these um, PowerPoints and um, sort of help and then put those, maybe if you wanted to, print them off and put them into your folder. Um, as ever though, if you have any issues, any problems, please, please feel free to contact me um, and ask me either on the Google Classroom or um, through email and I'll speak to you soon.